I feel like I'm supposed to do it because it can help other people. little bit about myself I've been on somewhat of a spiritual awakening journey for about 10 years um I'm not who I used to be and by that I mean that I had a walk-in experience a little over a year ago and there's a lot I can say about that but it should be at a different time anyway um yeah I've dabbled in many um, healing arts, traditional healing, um, East Asian and Chinese medicine practices and um, herbal medicines and um, even modern medicines and other things. But so far, nothing I've come across has been quite as um, powerful to me and helpful to me too with deep healing as hypnosis. Um, I do think that what a lot of other medicine systems are lacking is the understanding and the accessing of the subconscious mind and deeper states, because that is where trauma lives, I think, and where a lot of people's problems live as known and unknown and learned patterns. Um, and that's why so many people just with their conscious awareness during the day have such a hard time making resolutions and sticking to commitments um, because they're just used to knowns and unknowns but they don't know where they come from or where they are one of the things I want to do with hypnosis is use it to help walk-ins and starseeds heal so they can integrate better and then integrate and awaken to their life purpose. Mm -hmm. and purpose can you tell me what a walk-in is? Because I, I know what a star seed is, but I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar yeah. with that term. I'll explain it briefly. Um, a walk-in is a soul or a soul fragment that either exchanges with another soul that was already in a body, usually after the body has grown up quite often after the age of 18 into early adulthood or adulthood. Um, so that's part of it is for the natal soul to grow up a body and then for a higher soul and more evolved soul, usually within the same soul family or soul um, over soul kind of thing or by soul contract, even if it's an exterior soul. And so either there's a complete exchange, usually with extreme amnesia, or in my case, it was more of a, I think it was a partial exchange, but also in a way, a higher part of like a tag team part of the oversoul I'm a part of. Um, coming in and integrating into me or trying to and there's still integration work to be done but um, yeah in my case one of the many walk-in symptoms was being able to remember all of my memories and everything that happened before but looking at them as if they were in a playing on a videotape and also being able to view them as if they're someone else's memories with the sense that I didn't live them. Hmm. And I, I've gotten to the point where I do kind of identify with a lot of my, this body's memories and I know where they are and what happened and everything about them. Yeah, that's one of the things that happens with walk-in. Some people have it more extreme where in the exchanges, the complete exchanges, a person even forgets their family members, most mm -hmm. of them. And they sort of recognize some photographs, but they have to 
have explanations about what happened and what's going on. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So it's one of those things that is transformative, but you have to go through a death and dying process first, mm-hmm. normally. Some walk-ins come in during your death experiences. Mine wasn't like a mortal near-death experience. It was more of a shock experience. But yeah, every walk-in is different and every mm-hmm. scenario is different. Would it so be weird of- to think that that could happen more than once in your lifetime? No, actually, I don't think so, because I've met at least one or connected with at least one other walk-in who is a triple braided walk-in. Yeah, she has three of them or had three integrations of other aspects. I think first I should explain what hypnosis is and is not, because there are a lot of common misconceptions about it in the media and mainstream so hypnosis is really a state that has been accessed for thousands of years by many cultures and um, healing arts and shamanic traditions and um, different people around the world Um, yoga and native shamanism um, practices and and the word hypnosis comes from um, Latin Greek language. I think it's actually Latin, but it was used in ancient Greece. Um, the word hypnos means sleep, and it was used in the sleeping temples where people would usually have a question or an issue to figure out, and then they'd go into a trance in a temple. Um, So what we're doing with hypnosis these days is kind of a clinical um, or clinically tested and proven modern version of what hypnosis has been used as in the past. And there have been techniques that have been developed um, to get a person into a hypnotic state. Hypnotic states are really quite natural. We all experience them every day, going to sleep and waking up, and even in deep sleep. A lot can be done with hypnosis. It can be a tool of accessing memories and even other parallel um, dimensions that I've actually found or sort sort of stumbled across but others have talked about that and it can be a tool of reprogramming memories and emotions and behaviors and a lot can be done with it so there's one thing i want to show you quickly it's like a diagram in the school i'm with that is taught it's called the theory of mind at the bottom here we have the primitive area which is the area of the mind and brain, although the mind is more than the brain itself, um, that is, that really all animals have, and it's very primal instincts and primal primitive thinking. So are these like the states of consciousness? Is that? Yeah, kind of um, different aspects of the mind that Um, operate at different levels so the primitive area is where people enter a lot in that um, they enter into flight fight states and also freeze and a fourth one I've heard is fawn and so those are fairly primitive states that are often triggered by different words and actions and even images and various things 88 percent that would be the modern area you see there Um, that's really like the pretty much the whole subconscious mind or how to how we explain it and there's the critical area that actually spans the liminal uh, threshold of the conscious mind and um, subconscious mind and it's the critical area first of all the conscious mind is where we are really aware and awake most of the time most people so the subconscious mind is many things i've actually been 
thinking deeply about this and how to explain it and really what it is and how it's used and how it manifests. Um, my personal take that I've come to suspect about the subconscious mind is that it's really an intersection of the what we call the mind, um, which connects the brain and the soul, the oversoul, soul contracts, and also um, external consciousnesses, such as even our guides and um, non physical spirit friends of, that we call different names. Um, it, I think, can intersect with the rest of the universe and synchronicities mm -hmm. and prayer and um, so many other states and things like that. Do um, visions and dreams fit into that? I'm just curious. Oh, definitely. Okay. It, the dream realm is the, the realm of the subconscious mind. Okay. I think, so whatever happened in 1996, I, I don't know what it was. And if, when I explain it, like in my mind, how I remember is that it, the light was so bright that it like encompassed like all my peripheral. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I saw the sun and there was a bright light. It was like, it like surrounded me. It was like, I don't, I don't know how to describe that, but also in my mind, I thought that it happened so quickly that if I had blinked, I would have missed it. One question I'd have to ask you before we do that is how you think your life will change if you recall what happened and how do you think it could get, how, do you think your life would get better or do you have a desire to go through with it no matter what you recall? That's a good question. Um, since I don't know what it is, I don't, I guess I don't really know if it will get better or worse, but I do know that um, I've been seeking some form of answers and there's been this like feeling of um, a pull that like takes me to certain places and certain things happen that were completely never could have been um explained or uh I guess what I'm saying is that like my life is very synchronistic and I keep following these things and it seems like it's getting more and more like quicker and quicker things are happening and like and I, I feel like when I follow like my heart and I follow what I really like am like what my it feels like a way to describe it would be like my soul is is seeking these things so so not so much my mind because a lot of times my mind's like oh my god that's so scary what you know like I don't know <laughs> my mm -hmm. mind will try to put me in check but sometimes I still go through with some things that are kind of seem scary um and it is kind of scary not knowing answers um but the feeling I have is that I should know the answers and so whatever that does to my life, I guess, is just another thing, you know? Within you, do you sense that what happened was benevolent or malevolent or neutral? What do you get a sense of that? Um, I get the sense that it was um, a learning experience. Okay. It was like a lesson or some like something I'm it was like meant to happen. I don't I don't know if that makes sense. Like I don't get the feeling that like it was like traumatic as in like a violating sort of way. I think I felt like fine with the light, even the story like when I would tell like retell the story years and years and years went by before anyone told me like oh that that could have been an alien abduction and I was like 
at that point when my friend Chris said that, I didn't even believe that any, I don't think I even knew what higher consciousness was or let alone another dimension or an, or an extraterrestrial or anything like that. Like my world was like very small. I didn't think outside of our planet really, Mm -hmm. not really. And so I think it was a lesson. I feel like I'm supposed to do it because it can help other people. Okay. That's how I feel like I feel like I can't be the only one who's thought about this for a really long time and been like, God, I'd be, like, I really wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder whether it's bad or good. I don't know. But like, I can't be the only one that wonders. Yeah. And I can tell you that as an experiencer of extraterrestrial and other extraordinary things myself, it is... I think rewarding to at least learn what happened if you don't remember and yeah it's um it's good to know and um normally these extraordinary um sometimes transformational experiences happen not by accident but by design Mm -hmm. 